This Bass Reeves, what I am, as a United States Deputy Marshal. U.S. Deputy Marshal Bass Reeves was a courageous and cunning lawman, a real iconic hero of the Old West. However, he's been relatively unknown until recently. He was born into slavery in Arkansas in 1838. He was named after his grandfather, Bass Washington. Reeves and his family were owned by a legislator named William Reeves. In about 1846, Reeves moved his operations, family, and slaves to Texas. When the Civil War broke out, Texas sided with the Confederacy, and his son George Reeves went to battle, taking Bass with him. During the years of the Civil War, Bass fought in many battles. He parted company with Reeves during the war, some say because Bass beat up George after a dispute in a card game. Others believe that Bass heard too much about freeing of slaves and ran away. Whatever the reason, he fled to the Indian Territory in Oklahoma where he took refuge with the Seminole, Cherokee, and Creek Indians. He learned their customs, language, and tracking skills. He also honed his firearm skills He became very quick and accurate with a pistol. In 1863, when the Emancipation Proclamation was enacted, Bass Reeves was free and no longer a fugitive. Reeves left the Indian Territory and bought land in Arkansas. He became a successful farmer and rancher, then married Nellie Jenny. They raised 10 children together, five girls and five boys, and they lived very happily on their farm. One day, the Federal Western District Court was moved to Fort Smith, and the hanging judge, Judge Isaac Parker, was appointed to the post. At that time, the Indian Territory had become exceptionally lawless as thieves, murders, and anyone wishing to hide from the law took refuge in the territory that had previously no federal or state jurisdiction. Judge Parker appointed Marshal James Fagan to hire 200 marshals. Fagan heard of Bass Reeves' significant knowledge and abilities and hired him as a U.S. deputy. All the deputies were tasked to clean up the Indian Territory and on Judge Parker's orders, bring them in alive or dead. I mean to kill you in one minute, Ned, or see you hanged in Fort Smith at Judge Parker's convenience. Which will it be? Bass Reeves is said to have arrested over 3,000 felons. He shot and killed 14 outlaws in self-defense. The fugitives were brought into Fort Smith Federal Jail. Reeves said the largest number of outlaws he ever caught at one time was 19 horse thieves. Reeves could not read or write, but this didn't slow him down one bit. Before heading out, he would have someone read him the warrants and memorize the contents. When asked to produce the warrant, he never failed to pick out the correct one. Bass Reeves has been recently given credit as the possible inspiration for The Lone Ranger. The authors George Trendle and Frank Stryker lived in Detroit. This is where many of the criminals Reeves apprehended were in prison. They may have heard the stories about Reeves. Reeves was a very dedicated lawman. He had high moral character. He rode a huge white horse and was well dressed with a large hat. He even shined his boots. Reeves was quite an imposing figure at six foot two compared to the average man that was only five foot six. He often went after criminals with an Indian companion. Instead of giving out silver bullets, he was giving out silver dollars. He began to earn a reputation for his courage and success at bringing in or killing many desperados in the territory. He was polite, courteous and had a great sense of humor. However, when the purpose served him, he was a master of disguises and often used aliases. Sometimes he would come off as a cowboy, an outlaw, a farmer, or even a gunslinger. He always wore two Colt pistols. The gun handles were butt forward for a faster draw. He was famous for his accurate shooting. Although he was shot at many times, he remained untouched by a single bullet, and because of this, he was called the Indomitable Marshal. It was said that he was so tough, he could spit on a brick and bust it. The tales of his capture are fascinating, full of imagination and courage. He was so famous at the time that in 1846, the very well-known female outlaw, Belle Starr, turned herself in to Fort Smith when she found out that Reeves had the warrant for her arrest. At one time, Reeves and a posse was pursuing two outlaws in the Red River Valley near Texas. They set up camp about 28 miles where the two men were hiding at their mother's home. Reed disguised himself as someone down on his luck, wearing an old pair of shoes, dirty clothes, carrying a cane, and sporting a floppy hat complete with three bullet holes in it. He hid his handcuffs, pistols, and badge under his clothes. When he arrived, he told a tale to the woman who answered the door. He said his feet were aching after being pursued by a posse, and that he had three bullet holes to prove it. 
Rees asked for a bite to eat, so she invited him in, and while he was eating, she began to tell him of her two young outlaw sons, and she suggested that the three of them would join forces. After he said he was extremely tired, she consented to let him stay for a little while. As the sun was setting, Rees heard a loud whistle coming from beyond the house. The woman went outside and responded with an answering whistle. Before long, the two riders rode up to the house. They talked to her for a long time outside. The three of them then came inside and she introduced her sons to Reeves. After discussing their various crimes, the three men agreed that joining up would be a pretty good idea. So they all went to sleep. Reeves watched the pair carefully as they drifted off. And when they were snoring deeply, he handcuffed the pair without even waking them. When the early morning approached, he kicked the boys awake and marched them out the door. Their mother was extremely upset. She followed them for three miles and cursed Reeves all the way. He marched the men to 28 miles of camp. He got $5,000 for that arrest. One of the more notable captures by Reeves was apprehending the notorious outlaw Bob Dozer. Dozer was known as a man that would commit almost any type of crime. He did it all ranging from cattle and horse wrestling to holding up banks, stores, and stagecoaches. He would murder. He had land swindles. Dozer was unpredictable and hard to catch. Many lawmen tried to apprehend him. None were successful until Reeves came along. Dozer eluded Reeves for several months, but Reeves caught up with him in the Cherokee Nation. After refusing to surrender, Reeves killed Dozer in a gunfight. Here's a crazy one. Jim Webb was no stranger to Reeves. He was a foreman in the Washington McLish Ranch. Webb was hot-headed and mean and a real tyrant. One day, a reverend named William Stewart was performing a controlled burn on his own property when the fire accidentally got out of control. It scorched some of the grazing pastures. Webb went and confronted the preacher and then he murdered him. A few days later after the killing, Reeves and a posse man arrived at the ranch disguised as trail driving cowboys. As it was the custom of the time, they asked for breakfast and Webb allowed them to come inside. But Webb and his right hand man, Frank Smith, were very suspicious of these strangers. They drew their sidearms and kept a close eye on them. Reeves kept up his charade until for a moment, something caught Webb's attention. Reeves sprang up, grabbed Webb by the throat with one hand and pulled his six shooter on him with the other. Smith wheeled around and fired two shots at Reeves, but he missed. Reeves hit Smith with one single shot. Webb surrendered while Frank Smith bled on the floor. Well, sadly, in 1896, Reeves' wife Nellie died at Fort Smith. The following year, he was transferred to the Muscogee Federal Court in the Indian Territory. The newspaper at the time said, place a warrant for the arrest in his hands and no circumstance can cause him to deviate. In 1907, Reeves' duties as deputy marshal ended. The state agencies assumed law enforcement. Bass took a job as a patrolman in the Muskegee Police Department. During his two years of service, there were no crimes reported on his beat. Well, in 1909, Reeves was diagnosed with Bright Disease, which is a kidney disease. It's the very same one that killed Judge Parker. This ended his career as he was almost bedridden. Bass Reeves died on January 12, 1910. He was universally admired and respected. His obituary described him as absolutely fearless and knowing no master but duty. Bass Reeves went from slave to courageous U.S. Deputy Marshal. He was truly an American hero. We'll keep the videos coming here on Strange History. Check out this video on train robbers. All aboard!